Hi, and welcome to this video where we're going to come to grips with how to define the determinant for a matrix that's larger than 3 by 3. It turns out that if we understand how to make a 3 by 3 determinant, we understand how to make any size determinant for any size square matrix whatsoever. Let's dig into an example here and see how this works. So here I have A. This is a 4 by 4 matrix. Right now, as of this uh, moment, we do not know what the determinant of a 4 by 4 even means or even is or how to calculate it. And we're going to make this up as we go. So the way that we did a 3 by 3 determinant was to sort of go along the top row and every time I select you know, one entry at a time along the top row and I select an entry in the top row, delete the row and column that it sits in and then take the determinant, whatever that means, of the leftover matrix that I see and I need to alternate signs as I go. Let's just try to adapt that same principle here to determine uh, what the determinant of a 4x4 four four should be. So I'm going to key in on this top row here and so I believe to make this uh, completely analogous to the 3x3 three three case, I should first focus in on that 1-1 one, one entry and take 4, and now I'll just delete the row and the column that it sits in, and I'm looking at a 3x3 three three determinant, or a 3x3 three three matrix that's left over, and let's take the determinant of it. Now we have already defined what a 3x3 three three determinant is, so I know how to calculate this. Let me just delete, get rid of those markings, and I'm going to take the determinant of the 3x3 three three that's left over. I'm going to leave off the square brackets here just to save some space. So the 3x3 three three determinant that's left over after deleting the first row and first column is 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And now to keep this again analogous to uh, the 3x3 three three case, I'm going to move to the next entry down the row here and alternate signs. So I'm going to have minus 1 times the determinant of, let's delete the row and the column in which that sits and look at the 3x3 three three that's left over. That's 0, 4, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 1, 1, 2. And let's write that down. I'm going to take the determinant of 0, 4, 2. Again, the 3x3 three three matrix is left over after deleting the row and column in which the number 1 there in the blue sits. Now this seems sort of circular. Uh, it's not actually circular, it's recursive. And what I mean by that is I'm defining a 4x4 four four determinant in terms of what a 3x3 three three determinant is. And, and a 3x3 three three determinant is defined in terms of a 2x2 two two determinant, which eventually I actually know how to calculate. Now let's keep going here. I'm going to move down the line again, alternate my sign, so I should have a plus minus 2, and then I'm going to take the determinant of the 3x3 three three block that's left over. Let's eliminate the row and column in which that sits, and you see 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 2 there. And let's take that determinant. Uh, kind of running out of room here. I hope I don't have to fall off the edge. 0, 1, 2, I'm going to squeeze it in there, 3, 2, minus 1, and then 1, 0, 2. And now I have a uh, new column I have to uh, somehow get. Let me just grab, a, I don't know, purple will be a good color for this. Let me grab this thing right there, eliminate the row and the column that it sits in, and take the 2 by 2, 3 by 3 determinant of what is left over. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I have to alternate my signs. I had plus, minus, plus, I should have a minus 5 times the determinant of the 3x3 three three that's left over after eliminating the row and column in which that 5 sits. And there we have it. So that should be, if I'm going to make this in any way analogous or congruent to the 3x3 three three determinant case, just to make it as natural as possible, this is what the 4x4 four four determinant should be. It's following basically the same process and all these little 3x3 three three determinants they might be little, but they're, they're actually quite a bit to calculate, uh, will be computable because I have I know how to calculate the 3x3 three three determinant. Let's, in fact, we're not going to completely calculate this out, but on the next slide here, I have this sort of written up here, and let's at least do one of these 3x3 uh, three three determinants uh, completely here. I'm going to take this uh, first uh, determinant here and uh, in the box below just calculate it out. Now, to calculate this determinant, I'm going to kind of go through a similar process. That should be 1 times, and I'm going to eliminate the row and column in which the 1 sit, like so, and then I take the 2 by 2 determinant that's left over. That would be 4 times 2 minus 1 by times 1, so 4 times 2 
minus 1 times 1. Now notice when I get down to a 2 by 2 case, uh, there's a very simple formula that kicks in. This is sort of the base case for this uh, uh, recursive calculation that I'm doing here. Now I'm going to alternate my sign, so minus 4, so I use this row element up. Now moving on to 4, eliminate the row and the column in which that sits and see the 2 by 2 that's left over and take its determinant. That would be negative 2 times 2 minus 0 times 1. And then finally move to the last uh, entry in that top row, alternate the sign, I have a 2, eliminate the row in the column in which that sits and take the 2 by 2 determinant that's left over. And that will give me uh, negative 2 times 1 minus 0 times 4. If you do all the math on this, all the uh, number crunching, this will come out to equal 21. And so this uh, block right here equals uh, 84. Now, I'm not going to do all the rest of this here, but I will mention that uh, this determinant here comes out to be minus 30. This determinant, which you can check to get some practice, will come out to be minus 3. And this determinant here comes out to be 9. And if I take 84 plus negative 1 times 30 plus negative 2 times negative 3 minus 5 times 9, all that calculates out to equal 75. So the determinant of that 4 by 4 was 75. We have yet to discuss what that number 75 actually tells you, and we'll get to that. But the main thing is how am I calculating this? Again, I'm using what I know about 3 by 3 determinants to calculate a 4 by 4 determinant. Now, you might well think, well, maybe I could calculate a 5 by 5 determinant in the same way, and we're going to get to that right now. Okay, let's talk about, in general, how would I calculate the determinant of any square matrix whatsoever. Importantly, we, have, we can only calculate determinants of square matrices if the number of rows and columns are different in my matrix and there's no such thing as a determinant. So we're going to define the matrix A, I, J here to be, if A is n by n, then A, I, J is the n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix I get by deleting row I, column J. And you can see why we might need to make that definition, because in the 3 by 3 case and in the 4 by 4 case, I proceeded by going along the top row of my matrix and deleting the row and column in which each of those row entries sat. So here's how we're going to define the determinant of any n by n matrix A. First of all, I'm going to take the 1, 1 entry of that matrix. Let's call that A11. That's the top left entry on the, the very first entry on the top row. And multiply it times the determinant of A11. So in other words, I'm going to delete the row and the column in which A11 sits and then multiply that by A11. This is exactly what we did in the 3 by 3 case and the 4 by 4 case. Next, I'm going to move to the next entry in that top row, which would be A12, change up the sign, very importantly, okay, offset that in the color, change the sign, and then multiply that row entry by the determinant of the matrix I get when I delete row 1, column 2. In other words, delete the row in the column in which little A12 sits, take its determinant, and then multiply by little A12. Now I'm going to change the sign again to plus and move down to the next entry in that row, A13. Delete the row in the column in which A13 sits, giving me an n, n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix left over, and take its determinant. And I'm just going to continue on in this way. Okay, The next one will be a minus, and I'm just going to put dot, 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 until at the very end, um, I'm going to have A1n times the determinant of a big A, 1N. Again, that's the matrix I get when I delete row 1, column N. Now, should this be a plus or a minus? Well, it kind of depends. If the N is even, as you saw up here in A1, 2, I'm going to be subtracting. If the N is odd, like in the first and third and fifth columns, I'm going to be adding. So uh, what I'm going to have here, just move that plus sign over a little bit, is negative 1 to a power, namely the power N plus 1. So if N is an even number. If I'm an even numbered column, I'm going to be subtracting. If n is an odd numbered column, I'm going to be adding. If you want to make this a little more succinct, this is actually going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of negative 1 to the i plus 1, a1i times the determinant of a1i. 
So let's put this into practice, and I'm not going to actually calculate this completely out here, but I have a 5x5 five five that's set up here, and we're just going to begin to walk through the process, and I'm going to tell you what the answer is. And if you have about 20 minutes left over uh, at some point, you can work through this as well. But uh, let's at least get the hang of the process here. So how is the determinant going to go here? Well, I at least set it up here. So I'm going to take... First of all, I'm going to key in on this top row here. This is where all the action is going to happen for the time being. I'm going to start by looking at the 1-1 one, one entry. So this will be 3 times the determinant of a smaller matrix, namely the matrix I get when I eliminate the row and column in which that 1-1 one, one entry sits. See that 4 by 4? That's the determinant I'm going to take in the next phase of this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 5, 7, 9, 0, 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, if I were to proceed onward and calculate that 4x4 four four determinant, that would require me to take four 3x3 three three determinants. And each of those 3x3 three three determinants requires me to take three 2x2 two two determinants. So the work is really stacking up here. So eventually, obviously, we're going to want to let the computer do this or come up and, I should say, come up with some ways that, some theorems that will make this go a lot faster. But let's uh, continue onwards here. So the next thing I want to do is move down to this element here alternate the sign, that's important, minus four times the determinant of, and you can just do this mentally, eliminate the row and column in which that sits, and there's a four by four left over, namely zero, two, three, four, zero, five, seven, nine, zero, zero, two, three, and zero, 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 one. Okay, next I would alternate the sign back to plus, and I'll stop doing the color thing here because I'm going to run out fast. Uh, move to the next <coughs> row entry there, that would be a 5 times the determinant of, now just eliminate the row and column in which that sits and take the determinant of what's left over. 0, 1, 3, 4, 0, 0, 7, 9, 0, 0, 2, 3, and 0, 0, 0, 1. Next, move on to that fourth element, so I'm going to be subtracting 4 times the determinant of, let's see what i got left over, eliminate its row and column, and I'll have 0, 1, 2, 4, 0, 0, 5, 9, 0, 0, 0, 3, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. Finally, I'm in the fifth column, I'll be adding this time, notice again the alternating signs, 5 times the determinant of, and let's see what's left over when I kill off the uh, last row there. That's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 5, 7, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. And now we're sort of done with the first stage here. Now I'm going to skip to the end here, and I want you to verify this. If something kind of interesting happens here, this entire term will go to 0. So will this. So will this, and so will this. We got a little bit lucky in this case here that a lot of the work here is going to, uh, going to uh, fall out here. And I'm just going to write the answer over here. It's all going to come from this determinant, which uh, you should find equals 30 when this is all said and done. Now, the fact that this works out so nicely, you might notice here that I have an upper triangular matrix, and there's something to that. And that's one of the things we're going to have start looking into in class is, uh, okay, determinants can be ridiculously hard and long and tedious amounts of work here. So obviously, we either want to automate this or come up with some theorems that, you know, make short work of it. So uh, upper and lower triangular matrices turns out are one of those situations where you can get by with less. So uh, that's how to compute the determinant of any size matrix whatsoever, as long as the matrix is square. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, what happens if you don't want to go along the top row. So stay tuned.